tweener alert, a unique tweener alert, where the shoe is good on pavement and concrete, but also on really soft conditions like this morning. Well, so much for that. I was gonna get you one more shot of my feet running with the gimbal, but it froze. It's cold out, two degrees Fahrenheit. What are you gonna do? All right, we're almost back to the gym. Let's go inside, warm up. Man, last week it was the GoPro 7 freezing up. Today it's the gimbal. Ay, ay, ay. You don't stop though. It doesn't mean you stop. Oh, how the tables have turned. Old Man Winter is back. Yes, I keep water out here for the live streams. More on that in one second. And it's frozen, rock solid. So, yep, it's freezing out. It's about, right now, it's about by 16, 17 degrees Fahrenheit. This morning when I started running, it was about two degrees. So, very chilly out. And yes, finishing up a little bit of oatmeal. Also, nothing like some hot oatmeal on a cold, cold day. Okay, hold on, let me set this over here. Mm. Unbelievable. Okay, what are the chances, everybody? It is now 12.39 p.m. on Monday. And as I was setting up here in the studio, oh yeah, first of all, live stream today, Tuesday, what is it, October 28th, roughly 7th. October 27th, 5 p.m. my time, 7 p.m. on the East Coast. Sorry for everybody in Africa, Europe, uh, Asia. I think you will be just waking up. So anyway, 5 p.m. my time. We're gonna be unboxing and this is a live stream for everybody, okay? So for the entire channel, we're gonna be unboxing a uh, winter running gear, okay? That's the focus of the live stream. And what are the chances? It's, it's now 12.40 today at 12.15, and this has been happening a lot over the last three or four days, which is why we're doing the live stream and why I pivoted today's vlog. I was gonna talk about the half marathon training plan, but I decided with the snowy conditions, the freezing conditions, it was time to answer Henry's question, great name by the way, and everybody else's questions, okay, about winter running shoes. So Henry literally like 20 minutes ago said, hey Seth, uh, I'm a college runner from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This is an email he sent me. I don't know if you know anything about South Dakota, but it gets very cold, icy and snowy here. I do know a thing about South, it is freezing up there and North Dakota. Oh my, you guys are tough up there. I got that's all I gotta say. Um, he says, I typically, I can't read the entire email. I typically use the Brooks Glycerin for e steezy types of runs, but I was nice. I, but I was wondering if you had any, any re recommendation for a trail shoe as I've never run in one. Anyway, Henry, your email, timing. I literally was walking into the studio and your email arrived. So great timing, we're diving into it. So here's the deal. When you are trying to make a decision about which shoe to choose from your running shoe rotation, okay, upper right hand corner, if you haven't seen that vlog, uh, when, when you're trying to make a decision, I'm always looking at, especially in the winter time, what pace, and Henry was alluding to this in his email, what pace am I trying to run? Uh, what are the snow conditions outside? What are the temperatures, okay? Because, all right, let me just dive into that. It could, you could have 
Um, you could have six inches of snow on the ground, but it could be 31 degrees Fahrenheit out, so the snow is starting to melt. Or you could have one inch of snow on the ground and it could be negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? You know, where I'm talking like, you know, probably northern Maine or I don't know, Alaska, uh, Norway, Jap northern Japan, all, all around the world. It can get really, really cold out there. So it's, um, so it's pace, snow conditions, uh, temperature, and then your sock options, okay? So those are, some fa those are some factors that I look at as I'm trying to decide which shoe I'm gonna run in that day. Now, uh, for the temperature, as the temperature is warming up, the snow, for example, I've run twice in the winter time in Boston, and it was slushy. Really, if you're from Boston, let us know in the comments, um, what are the conditions like in the winter time? When I've ever, whenever I have been there running in the winter, it's been very slushy snow, whereas today's snow, it was, uh, it was a champagne snow, okay? For those that don't know a skiing or snowboarding terminology, champagne snow is very lightweight. Um, it, it's, it's, it's actually a, a skier or a snowboarder's dream to go, because uh, it's not heavy. That's another way to think about it. The snow is not quite as heavy. That was the case today um so that will impact the shoe choice because what is the i guess all right what is the water concentration in the snow now real quick before we dive into the shoes the sock options getting a lot of questions about the best running socks for the winter um and again so in colorado we have we have winter here but it is nothing compared to a lot of the United States. Uh, in fact, Denver can be very mild in the winter. We're talking upper 30s Fahrenheit, lower 40s often. Whereas in the mountains, it can change more so, but it actually can be pretty mild here in Denver depending on the winter. So for socks, if I had to choose one company to recommend for you, it would be Smart Wool. That's what I ran in today. The wool-based sock that Smart Wool produces, so there, that's how you spell it on your screen right now, um, it just wicks away the moisture really, really well. Now moving on to my favorite road running shoe right now for winter training, especially when I have to deal like today with you know an inch of snow, two inches of snow, which tomorrow, it's actually gonna be a little tip of the day. Uh, the day it snows is actually a great day to go run. It's the day after that's the harder day because all of that snow, at least in Denver, it's going to melt today a little bit and then ice overnight. So it's actually going to be more difficult tomorrow to run. Just a little, a, little, uh, a little tip for everyone out there that hasn't ran much in winter conditions. Okay, so for me, I'm trying to run fast. I need to run fast. I need to do fast workouts in November, December, January, leading into my half marathon. I don't want to sacrifice the speed uh, that I want to use in my training, even in long runs. You know, my long runs are usually that 6.30 to 6.50 a mile, roughly. I'm going to keep that going all the way up into the half marathon in late January or February, which means I need a shoe that has good grip, but not as, that is not uh, crazy heavy, okay? So there's a couple options out there that I have found over the last couple of years. Now, keep in mind, getting back to the snow conditions. If you live in Boston, I'm just gonna say Boston, but somewhere where it's really slushy, it's just like always slushy when you're out running or maybe it's a snow rain mix uh, and it's like really wet, wet, uh, wet weather. You know, I'm thinking maybe the UK, uh, you might need a shoe that is Gore-Tex. Here in Denver, I do plan to test Gore-Tex running shoe, uh, yeah, running shoes, winter running shoes for you soon, but I frankly don't find that I need to wear Gore-Tex road running shoes in the winter because again, our conditions in Colorado just are not that extreme in my opinion. And instead, what I will do, instead of buying Gore-Tex, I'll just wear socks that are just a little thicker, okay? And that might mean, if you're thinking about doing that option, that might mean that you might need to go a half size up in your sizing. So just keep that in mind, or just make sure that wherever you buy the shoes, that they have a great return policy. So that's more of my strategy. I would rather have a lighter shoe that's not Gore-Tex, wear some you know, slightly thicker socks, like, I'm, like these Drymax socks. These socks are awesome for that. And so what I'm looking for is a shoe that can do the crossover, all right? The tweet, here we go, tweener alert, a unique tweener alert, where the shoe is good on pavement and concrete, but also on really soft conditions, like this morning, out in the snow. So that I want that grip, so I'm not afraid of falling, and I didn't fall today, uh, but I also want a shoe that I can go, yes, a little faster in. 
for in this shoe, and you know what it is, the Hoka Evio Speed Go to 100%. Wait, there, we'll leave that one over there. Here it is. In fact, I have not, oh, this is crazy. So I have not weighed this shoe in a long time. You're looking at a 2019 shoe right here, special shoe. Very, so many people have bought this shoe and love, love, love it. All right, let's put it on the scale real quick. Just to remind, I, I honestly, I do not know. Let's see, let's see. 8.6 ounces in my size, which uh, for a trail shoe is unbelievable. Anything under 10 ounces is pretty good in my size for a trail shoe, which comes out to 244 Gram. So that means it's not, it's not like, it's not under eight ounces. If it was, that would be amazing. It's not. But if it was, it would be the ideal shoe also for tempo days. So for this shoe, the Hoka Evo Speed Go, when it is a snowy out, when it's icy out, I will be using this guy all winter long for, and here's, oh my goodness, you ready for this? I'll be using this shoe all winter long for long runs, for middle distance runs. Um, I will take it out, you know, if I have to for a tempo day as well. I'm trying to think what else. I mean, I would even use it for an easy day if I really didn't want to fall out there. Uh, okay, so you ready for this? You know I love this shoe, everybody. Oh my goodness, you ready? Here it is on your screen right now. Can you see it? 200 and 70, I never take a shoe, rarely over 100 miles. 273 miles means that I absolutely love the Hoka EVO. Speed Goat, a couple more options for you. Both, okay, well, um, both shoes from 2019. 2019 just crushed it in this uh, division of trail running shoes that can cross over to the winter. Well, now I will say real quick, not Gore-Tex, but it does have some overlay to help keep the toe box a little drier. Again, if you are in really slushy conditions, this might not work out for you. Henry, I could suspect in South Dakota that it would because it's so cold up there in the wintertime. I think the snow doesn't really turn to slush as much. It just stays frozen, okay? So we've got the Saucony Mad River TR, and I know this one is heavier. How much? I don't know exactly. Hold on, let me just take this out. Saucony Mad River TR. There is a two out now, um, but the two, sorry, I, I did not get a, t a, chance to, a chance to test the two, but this is the Mad River TR from 2019. We are looking at, hold on, hold on, 9.5 ounces for the Mad River TR, so almost an ounce heavier than the EVO Speed Go. And last but not least, another 2019 shoe. This one's gonna be almost impossible to find, the Nike Pegasus 36 Trail. Um, and could you use the Wild Horse 6 from 2020? You could. I would actually, I would actually use the Wild Horse 5 from 2019 over the 6 for uh, urban running where you want to go a little fat because it's lighter is the reason why. If you, when you want to go, actually it's right here. I'll just show it to you. At, wow, they're both right here. Okay, so here's the Wild Horse 6 right there, right there, and here is the Wild Horse 5. So I would actually choose the 5 uh, for winter running, whereas this guy is definitely more geared toward, and now I should clarify, I'm not talking about trail running, winter trail running. I'm talking about urban road running, okay? Urban, as the title alludes to, and yes, all of these shoes are available down below in the description, okay, from Running Warehouse. So again, just to drive the point home, and this is another key point here, is that if your body is used to running on dirt trails all summer, all fall, and then you have to transition to pavement and concrete all winter, just be a little careful of stress fractures, stress reactions, so you don't get a, a bone injury because you're running on a harder surface. Scientifically, I don't know if this is, I think it is. I, I feel like pavement, especially in the summertime, I know this is crazy, feels a little softer because the sun heats it up um, in, the, uh, in the summertime, it's so hot out. Whereas in the wintertime, it gets just a little harder. Not so much in concrete, because concrete is just, it's made different. But I'm sure some uh, scientists out there or somebody that works in the industry could uh, attest to that maybe. And last point on the EVO Speed Goat, the lug depth is three millimeters, okay? Three millimeters, it's just the right amount because if you get over three or four millimeters, then you start to feel the lugs under your feet when you're transitioning from snow 
back to pavement. You know, if yeah, if like some of the streets are plowed and some of them are not yet. Uh, so, and I also love the fact that it's a bright color just to be seen a little bit better out there in the darker winter months as we're pounding ground, working hard out there. Oh man, here we go, question of the day. What is your go-to uh, uh, road running shoe for the winter, okay? Which means you could get, you could toss out a trail shoe or a road shoe, whatever you have found to work best for you. And again, I'm thinking more along the lines of a shoe that can go up, you know, to faster paces. And one last shoe that is on my radar, I'm not sure if I'm gonna pick it up only because of the weight. It's 10 ounces in my size, is the Saucony Peregrine Ice Plus. So it's built for winter running. It is down below as well. And I haven't tested it yet though. Oh man, if somebody does pick it up, let me know because it's, it's on my radar, but I just hesitate to get a shoe that's kind of in that weight for the types of paces that I need to be doing to get ready for a fast half marathon on the roads. That is it everybody. Hoka EVO Speed Goat, my number one road running shoe for the winter time. And it, even though it's a trail shoe. There you go. All right, everyone. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Thanks for being here. Stay warm out there. Stay warm. See you tomorrow.